so we're going to start the session. Probably more people are going to come in, but let's ignore them. Uh, and I would like to introduce the first speaker of the day, Eva Maurina, who will talk about Fiware and how Europe is going open source. Well, good morning, everyone. I must say it's my honor to be here in front of you, such a nice group of developers, even though I'm not myself a coder, but it doesn't mean that I have something less important to tell you about. And I really want to speak shortly about the big initiative currently going on in Europe, where Europe tries to position itself against the big giants of the US and tries to foster innovation, innovation ecosystem here in Europe. And I, why I'm here today, I really want to address you, introduce you to it, and so because I think together we can actually push it a bit because there are some challenges on its way. And why I decided actually how I got into all of this, so I would say two and a half years ago, ago I joined actually a smart home startup. So we were building up a smart home and our vision was, hey, let's build a cloud platform with open APIs for different verticals so everybody can build applications on the top of it. It took two years, what we got after two years was there was some smart home functionality, but we were far away from a cloud platform with open APIs for different verticals. Then I was about to switch jobs and in one of the interviews I was introduced to Fiverr, which is a cloud platform with open APIs. Then I looked into that and I saw, okay, it took five years, it took around 300 million euros and around 400 developers and they managed to build this cloud platform with open APIs. I thought, okay, we, we were working hard on it with around eight developers and we got to the smart home part, but it was really still far away from this huge platform that enables everybody else to build on the top. That actually inspired me. I read a bit more into that and I saw it's all open source. They want to build up an open source community around it that would take care of it. There are a lot of public APIs for different verticals that enable really coders to build applications quickly. And all that is meant really to have an alternative for Google Cloud, for IBM Bluemix, for AWS, and so on. Because Europe realized, European Commission, hey, we have to do something because every, everybody, everything otherwise is based in the US, it's, everything is hosted in the US, and what's happening here in Europe, we have smart people, so we have to do something about it. Currently, after five years of development, this is now the phase when European Commission and the corporates that build that, they have invested so much money and now the challenge is to really put that into a sustainable initiative, to really build up this community that are engaged into and taking care of this whole technology platform. Currently there are a thousand companies, new startups building up solutions based on this platform. I must say, of course, their main reason to start working with this was that the European Commission gave some cash actually for the acceleration period to build on Fiverr more than 100,000, so that was the main reason why developers and companies decided to use Fiverr. And that, that leaves now to the challenge that next year the official project ends and there is supposed to be the open source community that takes care of it. And now the question is how do we onboard all, all people on that? I don't want to make, I, it's not a sales presentation, I'm not getting paid to do this. I just think it's really cool if something like that is there in Europe if we manage to have this alternative to the US stuff if we have our own European cloud platform with APIs <coughs> being hosted here. And I think what Fiverr needs is really they need people who think, okay, this is cool, I want to contribute and I want, and I want to make it sustainable. So it's currently also, of course, there are bugs in the whole technology in some APIs. Some, some components work perfectly, some are still lagging. So everybody is really welcome to be part of this and actually contribute on this European-wide initiative. And just the question, how many of you have heard of Fiverr? Yeah, that's what I thought, actually not that many out of this room, let, let's say five to seven people, that's not a lot and it's really aimed to engage all the people who are actually able to code and write cool applications. So I will tell you shortly a bit, give an insight into the Fiverr and then you can judge on your own, hey, is it something for me? I want to look into that more into detail. I want to contribute or you think, yeah, I'm happy with all the alternatives out there. So the Fiverr is really meant to be a platform where people have everything that they need to build new prototypes, to build new solutions. So there is the cloud infrastructure, there are the software comp components and standardized APIs, there's even open data that enable to actually 
test the applications very quickly and it's also there is a lot of features so that everything is secure. And I will go a bit deeper into all of those components. So currently in Europe there are actually 14 nodes across Europe in different countries so there's really there are machines laying around with a lot of computing power. I think now it's around a bit less than 3,000 cores. It was a few months ago and they are building up new actually computing power as, so as more developers actually joining the platform. And the big, I think the biggest advantage is really all the software components that are out there that are public and documented even though documentation sometimes is still not up to the level that you would expect or you would be happy with. And the idea is really to say, okay, I need this component, I need this module, and it, it's all actually powered by Docker, so you can actually create your container easily and start working on it. And just to give you an idea, what, what do I mean by those, public, by those public software components? So there are different, I would say, Vertical, so there are really APIs and software components for the data related applications. So, for example, the most popular one is the context broker called Orient. So, it, if you're working with sensor, sensor on that, that's really a tool where you can log in all the data, where you can monitor whether there are any changes, and you can use that data also to trigger some actions on the user side or in the real world. Then there are also software components for the Internet of Things side. For example, if you want to manage the data real time on the gateway, or if you want to actually manage the devices on the backend, so there are really existing documenting models already for that. Then there are also tools for the advanced user interface. Just to give you an example, there is also a module that lets you work with 3D images in the scene, so in the application. On the security side, an example would be that there is also a identification manager called Keyrock, so you can actually also manage the authentication of access rights. That's something that I, I think that's already very advanced and it's also meant to be the advanced middleware components, for example, to have all the backend encrypted if you think about the device level. Then going more into the commercialization, there are also software components to, for example, to sell the apps, to distribute the revenues, there is a, already a module for the store. And then last but not least, there are also couple of components for the cloud and just as I mentioned Docker is one of the example or for example a module that lets you predict what kind of computing power you will need to if you are scaling it up to more and more users. How does it look like there? So for example this is the vertical of the 3D and virtual reality so you can see so there are a lot, lot of components and you can if you click on that then you see what is the documentation, what is it used, what is it used for what do you need it for and how you actually start using it. As I mentioned, there is also open data. The idea is to collect open data from cities that should be there for free. And if companies are publishing their data, it might be also against the fee. But in the end, as a, as a developer, as a company developing new products, they really benefit from the accessible data there. For example, if you are working on applications for smart city, then you actually get already data that you can try all of this and see actually how, how does it work on the user level and so on. So to summarize it, really, what is it meant to be? So it's meant to be open, so it's an open platform, no proprietary systems, which also means it must be modular, so you can select the things you actually want to use, what you need, because many, I think, I would expect that some companies and developers, they have already something developed when you're working on one solution and then you can say okay I want to complement my solution with that and that functionality based on fiber so it's no problem to actually have different platforms merge together because of the APIs it's interoperable of course and also non-intrusive as I mentioned you can have it as part of other systems and of course there's also no vendor lock-in it's possible to migrate the solution anytime to any other do any other infrastructure and currently what's happening as I mentioned so there there is this technology platform there are bugs so some developers are saying hey it's it's not documented well enough it's not working there are some components that work really well especially those ones for smart cities and Internet of Things and what the European Commission decided now they will try to engage new developers that are not already using Fiverr by 
giving them some cash actually to fix the bugs. I think that's, that will start as of the next months. But for me, I, I would really encourage you just to have a look at it. You can get your own account. You can create your virtual machine there. You can say, OK, I want to use, I don't know, MongoDB, and I want to use that module, that software component. And you can test it and see how quickly actually it is to prototype new things. And if you ask which language is behind there, there's everything. There's Python, C++, JavaScript. It really depends on the software component. But because of APIs, it's no issue. So that's really an overview. I hope you got excited. And if you have more questions, I can try to answer them. There's also a lot online. There is a Fiverr Academy, which really is meant to onboard people to help them to get into the system with tutorials. There is a lot of on the slide share. There are videos. And also, if you, if you know already Fiverr, and you, if you think that's and that's missing, tell me, because I might go to those people who can have an impact also on that on a higher level. So thank you. Any questions for now? What is the purpose of Fiverr? The purpose of Fiverr, as I mentioned, is really to enable innovation in Europe, to have a European solution that lets developers, lets coders, lets companies to create solutions based on the well, the infrastructure here in Europe, not that everything is hosted on AWS or Microsoft Azure and so on. That's really yeah, meant to be an alternative, all those things. Is it financed by the European Union? This whole development was financed by the European Commission and some corporates like Telefonic, IBM. As I mentioned, there has been around 300 million invested. So European Commission, they know they cannot let this go down because they they will get a problem and what I heard this is the first time in the during the existence of European Commission that they changed actually the project description because they realized what they did until now it's okay but there were some issues there were some partners in the community that were not active but getting paid for it so they ch that has never happened before that they changed actually the working package description of a big European project because in the during the last few months they kicked out some partners and they got new people on the board so that they really make this a success with the money that's left for the period when it's publicly funded. But I think one third of this comes from the European Commission and two thirds is actually coming from companies. So also the like companies like Siemens, IBM, Telefonic, Orange, they are all part of this because of course it's also in their interest to keep it here in Europe. Yes. And what they are targeting currently it's really part of it is developers who would be part of the community and of course also startups because they are the ones who need prototyping, who need to be quick in the development process. Maybe it's less interesting for companies that have already their solution there. It doesn't make sense then to migrate it to this prototyping environment. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Here you go. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I'm wondering it is, is, you, you said you need people to get involved, and I'm, I'm curious, is it open to all skill levels or, or just to seasoned developers? I would say that, I mean, if you call yourself a developer, it's for you. I even tried, I also created my account and then I made my virtual machine, but that's as far as I got, and maybe that's good. But I think you can really give it a try and it depends what your expertise, are you more the front-end developer, or are you going more into back-end? But the, aim is really to have it a really a full stack meant for all kinds of applications so you for sure find something for you and there are tutorials and so on I honestly they are not perfect but that's also why the community is needed is the feedback hey what should be better and so on I know here in Vienna currently there are some people who are looking into Fiverr and who are starting to develop with Fiverr but Austria was not part of this big project five years ago. Telecom Austria was invited to be part of it, but they didn't. So that's why, no, but actually Fiverr is not that spread in Austria. And I, as I learned about it, I thought, I hope it actually happens. I hope it becomes a big thing. So that's why I'm also here today. But I think you for sure should give it a try. Yeah. Thank you. I saw a question also here. Yes. You said it's, uh this Docker there, is it compatible with the, the Docker Hub and everything? Yes, yes. And as far as I know, like, and I, what I know that now in December they're also releasing a new version of everything, so then there should be the latest version of Docker implemented, the latest version of OpenStack. 
because initially the problem was as they started to develop four or five years ago until this year let's say spring some of the versions of components were not up to date but that's now they, they got the feedback hey this doesn't work like that so we need actually having it up to date so that's what's coming now in December or now in November yeah. and so moving forward once it's yeah. out of being funded by the public purse yeah. how do they intend to pay for it currently the you mean the, for the fiber or you mean for your solution that you develop on the fiber? Well, both, really. Because how it, how it works now, you can use it for free if you're working on your prototype. If you want to commercialize your solution, you cannot use those 14 instances because they won't really enable prototyping. So then you have to migrate it to your own ho actually hosting provider. But currently they are also building up commercial fiber nodes, which would be then kind of a next step after this prototyping environment, which is called the fiber lab with those 14 nodes. Then afterwards you, migrate, you can migrate it to this fiber commercial node where you would pay for the computing power, because in this case you don't pay anything for the DevOps for computing power, it's all, it's all there. And then if you ask me how they want to sustain the whole thing, of course, you can sell then the, your solutions that you build on the top of that. I think also the ones who will provide the nodes to host it for commercial solutions, of course, they will charge as well. It must, it will bec it must become a sustainable thing. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, what is running on the back end? I mean, is it based on Red Hat or a commercial Linux distribution or do they roll their own? Or? Okay, I'm not sure, and now I'm not sure if I understand your question correctly, but for the whole <laughs> node thing, they're using OpenStack. If that's, oh, but maybe that's not your question. <laughs> no, no, OpenStack's it, a level above that. Yeah. The, so you, it's not running Windows, obviously. No, yeah. no, no, uh, no, I think it's Linux. Yeah, but it's just wondered what type and... Okay, I, I cannot answer your question, but I am glad to take this question and... Ooh, and ask for an answer. The second thing I found out on Tuesday yeah. about this. You okay. said it's been running for five years. Um, a person in your own company, Peter, gave a talk. No, Peter that, took me, yeah. But he, he never mentioned your talk. We never mentioned what? Your talk, so he didn't... Yeah, I, yeah actually we are the most who are kind of, let's say, a, bit of, a little bit of passionate about Fiverr, so we are, we are there in some events where people want to know about it, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I think he has his own things to care about, but he's normally giving the fiber talks in German. That's something I wouldn't do, so, <laughs> yeah. No, but he's a bit more technical guy than I am. But this yeah. is also not related to Init's. Like, yeah. Peter's talk was more from Init's. The yeah, company but that talk was about the same thing, but obviously yeah. from a different perspective. Yeah, so yeah. that's why today's a non-commercial talk coming from someone who is just interested in the technology and that's why they work. just happens to work for the same company. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, that's how I got to know about it, actually. That's feedback for her, not yeah. necessarily for the group. That okay. So that if you want this to be a wider thing, then you should talk to yeah. people with you within okay. your own community. No, you are right. So if you should have said on Tuesday, hey, on Saturday there is another talk. No, it's good. No, thank you. Yeah. No. Any other questions? What is it? it, it what is Init? Init, I think actually the startup incubator here in Vienna. So we are incubating founders of new companies that are coming from an academic environment. So if there is a spin off of the university or if okay. the yeah, so that's basically incubator here you know, in Vienna. And of course, what we are also telling our startups, say check out Fire, where it might give you some benefits as being quicker spending less money on the development and so on. That's how I got to know about Fiverr as I joined actually the startup incubator. So Init is an Austrian company? Yes, it's here. Actually, Teo... Uh, at first time saw it. So okay, okay, okay. So no, and actually Teo is one of the shareholders of Init because okay, it's great. more a public company than a private company. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank, thanks a lot. Yeah.